So thank you very much again for joining me for another um, executive board update, guys. Um, Lee, I think we'll start with, you know, do you have an update as to when supporters will be able to return to the stadium? Well, yes. I mean, I think um, the answer to the question is October. Um, we're waiting for final confirmation of that, Tom, to be honest with you. But uh, we are planning on the basis that fans will be allowed back into stadiums from October the 1st onwards. Uh, so there'll be a couple of games we'll miss at home behind closed doors and then we'll move to um, a controlled environment of the stadium being open, but only for a certain number. And the, the guys will talk us through the detail of that during the course of this um, interview. But um, yeah, we expect and we're planning for the beginning of October. But I stress that is yet to be final confirmed. And Steph, when we do move to social distance crowds, what do you think our capacity will be at the Banksies? Um, at the moment, Tom, we're working on around three to th three two, uh, three thousand two hundred. Um, obviously, it has to be socially distanced. It has to be safe for supporters to come in, uh, and therefore, we will be operating at a, a significantly reduced capacity, um, but certainly one that we'll be able to get our season ticket holders in on. Uh, and you know, we that again, as Lee says, we await uh, confirmation from the government, but that's where we are at the moment. Um, and Dan, what can supporters expect when they visit the stadium in terms of you know changes that have been made? First and foremost, within the stadium bowl, um, individuals will be socially distanced from each other in terms of their seat. Um, accessing the stadium rather than that being by the traditional turnstiles, what we plan to do is open up all the gates around the stadium um, to improve the ingress and egress in and out of the stadium um, and then create a catering village which will form part of the red zone car park. So that will mean that supporters will produce their uh, season ticket at the various three entrance points and that will give them access into the stadium um, bowl, but also the catering area where they get a bite to eat and a drink and then make the way into their seats um, to maintain that social distance. And the same on the way out, um, we'll look to do it stand by stand to allow the 3,000, 3,200 people to be able to socially distance as they, as they leave the stadium as well. So it will be very different. Um, we're going to launch some frequently asked questions over the course of the next 24 hours, which hopefully will answer all supporters' um, queries about what the new experience will look like during this phase. And given the reduced capacity, season ticket holders guarantee to have their exact seats that they've requested? Sadly not, Tom. Um, with, with a fair wind, they'll be in the same block that their seat would be, um, possi possibly the same stand, but there will be the odd exception where we will have to move season ticket holders from the stand that they're currently in into another stand. But what we will uh, ensure is that is uh, of the, the same view, i.e. if you've got a season ticket behind the goal and sadly we can't accommodate you behind the goal. We'll look to put you behind the um, the other goal because obviously we won't have away supporters here. If you've got a season ticket in the main stand and sadly we're not able to accommodate your seat in the main stand, we'll move you into the, the family stand. So you will get the same view that your season ticket is. But obviously because of social distancing, uh, we just can't guarantee that season ticket holders will have the... They certainly won't have the same... Hopefully they'll have the same block. There will be some situations where it won't be the, the same standard that they are in. Um, obviously, we just ask for season ticket holders' patience and understanding that what is a very difficult time. And Steph, season tickets are, are now back on sale. Um, is this the best way for, for supporters to guarantee, you know, watching the Saddlers live next season? Yeah, I, I just to correct you there, Tom. The, the season tickets, I think, will be going on sale on Monday. Uh, and we'll obviously release all the details over the next 24, 48 hours, as Dan says, um, to inform supporters who haven't already got their season ticket, um, the, you know, the process of going through uh, and getting their, their ticket for next year. Um, but yeah, your question, um, it's very likely that the only way to, to watch Warsaw live next year will be to, to, to be as a season ticket holder. Um, as I said earlier, the capacity is going to be between three and three, two. We've already got 2,100 season ticket holders who purchased in the early bird. Um, so we're going to have about seven, seven to 800 standard bowl tickets to sell. 
uh, and then a limited number, probably up to about 100 hospitality season tickets to sell. So the only way to absolutely guarantee seeing us live next year may well be as a season ticket holder. Uh, but obviously, as, as we launch, uh, relaunch the season tickets and put them on sale, we'll put reg regular updates out there for supporters so they can see, uh, you know, where we're at. Um, but yeah, quite possibly as a season ticket holder might be the only way to see us next year. And how long have supporters, you know, how long have they got to buy a season ticket? Well, as I say, they'll go on sale on, on uh, Monday. Uh, and they'll be on sale uh, ultimately until we, we sell out. Um, if we don't sell out, uh, then obviously support, a limited number of supporters may be able to buy on a match-by-match -match basis. Um, but we anticipate there, there to be good demand, uh, and it could only be a matter of, of weeks, if not days, um, that, that, that those tickets are sold. So, um, yes, yeah, so they'll be, on, they'll be on sale as long as they, they need to be. Um, but I'd advise supporters, if they do want to buy a season ticket, to get in there early. And Dan, how have seats been allocated to current season ticket holders and how will they be allocated to you know, people who are either renewing later than the original early bird or buying new ones? Um, well, well, as I said, Tom, I mean, where, where possible, we've kept season ticket holders in the, the same block or stand that they're in. So the two areas that are, uh, are overpopulated would be the main stand and the, the lower home serve stand. So there'll be some supporters who have got season tickets in that area who will be relocated to either the family stand or the, or the traditional away stand. Um, and, that, and then the upper and middle tier, we, we, we've been able to fit everybody in who's a season ticket holder in that area. Um, and the, same with the um, the community standards as we, uh, uh, in terms of where we are at the moment. Um, the season tickets that will go on sale um, from Monday, there'll be a very limited number in the middle and upper tier, and then there'll be availability in the traditional away stand and the uh, family stand. So those season tickets will go on sale from Monday, um, and all the prices are on the website and across our social media platforms. And I suppose it's a question that... Um, any one of you could answer really will you know is it anybody who's buying during this period can they still access you know the behind closed doors games on i follow yeah i'll take that tom yeah so if you if you purchase a season ticket um whilst we are effectively behind closed doors um you will get a um a, a access code to allow you to watch all of our behind closed doors home games uh on i follow so you won't miss any of the action um, in purchase of the season ticket, although sadly you won't be uh, at the stadium to witness it. Um, but we're, as, as Lee said at the outset, we're hoping to probably uh, We are working on uh, having uh, all supporters, you know, all season tickets back by um, hopefully the... Um, and I think... You mentioned earlier as well, Steph, that we are able to offer very limited hospitality passes, but there are still some on offer, aren't there? Yeah, so um, the, the hospitality area is, is similar to the stadium. The, uh, we have to be socially distanced, obviously, to keep supporters safe uh, in, in the current environment. Um, that does mean that we're not going to be able to be able to run the same um, capacities within those rooms. Um, so we are... Uh, looking at launching uh, a hospitality season ticket, which is um, something we've done at, on an ad hoc basis in the past. But in order to help help us plan and keep supporters safe, um, we, we're, we're offering a hospitality option that we're, people will be able to purchase uh, and that will give them access to, to uh, at least a two course meal throughout the uh, throughout every, every game they attend this season. Um, existing season ticket holders, if they've already purchased the ticket, they can uh, obtain the hospitality ticket by uh, and an upgrade price. Um, we want to get everyone in, as many in as we can, um, but the, the opportunity will be limited. So if hospitality is something that you are looking for this season, uh, in terms of eating up in the in the Bonsa Suite, the fantastic um, food that we have there, then you know a hospitality season ticket is a good option. And Dan, what will change in, in the lounges when uh, when we do return to social distance crowds? 
Um, we'll cover that. We'll cover that through the frequently asked. I'm going to the detail of individual lounges, lounges but uh, uh, Stefan uh, rightly says it will be a different experience. Um, we'll still have obviously the 1888 lounge in use, the Bonza Suite, the Stadium Suite, the community hub um, uh, under the current guidelines are being used as the away dressing room area. So sadly, we won't be able to open that immediately, um, which which is disappointing. But obviously, it's unavoidable in terms of allowing social distances for the home and the away teams. Um, and as I spoke about earlier, there'll be catering villages out on the, um, the car park areas where um, we'll be applying for some temporary event notices so people will be able to grab a pint outside and, and have a drink and meet up with a few of the friends before going into the stadium to watch the game. So it'll be a different experience, but we want to make it as enjoyable as possible and as safe as possible for our supporters. And if everybody's a season ticket holder, that's positive from our point of view in terms of we know the numbers, track and trace system as well. We know who's in the stadium where they're sitting and also for the supporters they'll be used to this new norm and uh, as the weeks go on they'll get they'll get a better understanding of it and it'll, it'll flow better in terms of uh, the whole operation and you mentioned there about the you know the the, the food village outside where people you know, can grab a drink outside but will the kiosks be open inside the stadium for supporters the kiosks in the corners of each stand won't be open because we need that space really for the toilets um, that, to, to enter those the toilets into each corner. We're looking at the upper and middle tier um, because we've got more room up there for, the, for those kiosks. Um, and, and as I say, the, the, the vast majority of the catering will move from inside the stadia to the exterior of the stadia to allow people to socially distance, grab themselves a bite to eat and grab themselves a couple of uh, drinks before the match. And obviously, half time. And Lee, I think you know, just on a, a final note, the support from the the fans throughout the lockdown period and during the first early bird period was was exceptional. Can you just summarise your, you know, your thoughts on, on what it's going to be like when we have fans back in, and you know, just a, a quick thank you to the fans for their continued support, really. Yeah, I mean, I. I... I always have the opportunity, or when I have the opportunity, I take it to, to thank the fans for sticking with us through this period. I mean, I wish we could, you know, the Sheffield Wednesday game, we'd expect a crowd of nine or 10,000, I think, if, um, if we could on uh, Saturday, but uh, at least that one's on Sky. And I think we're, we are making the very best that we possibly can of a um, the COVID secure stadium and all I, all I ask is that the, the fans understand that we're doing the very best that we can in terms of making sure that everyone is safe in the stadium. You may not get everything you want. You may not be able to sit in the seat that you always have. You may not get quite what you've always got. But trust, um, we, we have spent hours and hours trying to make sure that the offering we give to you is the best we can possibly give at this stage. So bear with us. Um, try and make this work with us and we'll try and work with you to give you the best possible experience in the stadium that we can and then in you know this is from october onwards we hope and then perhaps within a month or so we can open the stadium up exactly as it's been in the in the past and everything will return back to normal but in the meantime we have to live with these constraints it's, it's up to us all um you know uh, responsible for the club but also all the supporters to behave accordingly um, and um, you know let's just all look forward to it because it leashes football back of sorts and I'm personally looking forward to it very very much. Thank you very much Jens. I'm sure the, uh, the fans will really appreciate the updates you've, uh, you've given us there and I, I look forward to another Zoom call um, you know, when we uh, eventually get back to competitive football.